If you can't tell from the bench sitting in front of me, this is going to be a video on how I made this bench that is sitting in front of me. I don't really know what to do with my hands, but I hope you enjoy the video. The bench is going to be made up of three main components. The first component being the four legs, pretty obvious there. The second component is going to be the four aprons that connect all four of the legs. And then lastly, we'll have our bench top, which is going to be two boards glued together with breadboard ends. So we're going to start construction with the legs first. Now I'm starting with some six quarter red oak here and I'm going to be ripping it down to around three inches wide on the table saw. Next we bring it over to the chop saw and I'm going to cut four boards at 17 inches. Here I'm just trying to visualize where I want my aprons to go. And then you can see me look really confused trying to do some mental math and staring at a tape measure for no reason. I was originally going to just use the six quarter boards as my legs but decided I needed to go a little bit beefier. Here I'm cutting another set of these legs so that I can glue them up and have a little bit larger legs. Here I'm just giving them all a quick couple passes through the planer to remove any saw marks and get them ready for the glue up. While the legs were drying, I went ahead and got started on the aprons. These are made out of four quarter red oak, and I'm ripping these down to a two and three quarter width. And then over at the chop saw, I'm cutting down my two long aprons to 32 inches and my short aprons to 11 inches. Now all four of my aprons are gonna have one inch tenons on each end. So here I'm just making that one inch mark on all the ends of my aprons. And I try and show the camera the marks I made, but I'm a terrible cameraman and you can't see it, but it's there. Now to remove some of the material on the tenons, I'm using the trenching function on my chop saw here. This essentially just stops the saw at a certain height and keeps it from cutting through all of the wood. It's good for removing a good chunk of the material and then we'll clean up all the tenons with a chisel. Here I'm just making a relief cut to cut off a small section of the tenon. And because I'm going to be using a router to make the mortises for these tenons, there's going to be a rounded edge on one side, so I'm going to have to round over one side of these tenons as well. Now that the legs are dry, we can go ahead and pull them out of the clamps. And since there was a little bit of glue squeeze out that stuck a few of them together, we'll use a little gentle persuasion to break them apart.
gave them a couple passes through the planer real quick just to make sure they were good and square. Then I squared up all the ends and made sure that all the legs were the exact same length. Here I'm making marks on all my legs and aprons so that I know which way I want to orient each piece. This way you can make sure that the best looking parts of the wood are facing out and you can hide any quote unquote ugly spots on the insides where they won't be seen. This is a step that admittedly I often overlook, but it's super important. Otherwise you might get your orientation all wrong and then cut your mortises on the wrong side and then have to remake your legs. Now to mark out for my mortises, I'm just clamping the aprons in place where I want them on the legs. And then I'm tracing the tenons onto the legs. Again, I tried to show you my marks, but we're back to me being a terrible cameraman. I'm using a spiral mortising bit to route out the mortises. And when you're routing into ingrain like this, definitely use a spiral bit. Don't use a straight bit like this because it's absolutely terrifying. Don't ask me how I know. I did these mortises with a few passes on my router lowering the bit each time until I got to the desired depth. And then boom, like a glove, a slightly loosely fitting glove, but I'll throw some extra glue in there and it'll be all right. After getting all of my mortises finished up, I went ahead and started the glue up on the legs and aprons. I started with the small sides first, Clamp them down to my workbench just to make sure that the legs didn't twist at all during the glue up. Once the small sides had dried, I went ahead and glued in the longer aprons. And you can enjoy watching me struggle to clamp these together because I don't have clamps long enough. This is me wondering if it's going to hold. I guess we'll see. Okay, now I can finally get started on the bench top itself. I've got some more six quarter red oak here that I'm cutting down to 35 inch length. Then at the table saw, I'm ripping these two pieces down to seven and a half inches wide to give me a total width of 15 inches for the bench. For the two sides of the boards that are gonna get glued together, I'm using a card scraper here just to smooth out any saw marks and get a nice finish for the glue up. If you've never used a card scraper, I highly recommend it, super satisfying. Now before actually gluing these two pieces together, I'm adding a really small chamfer to the top of the joint. This essentially just adds a little bit of definition to the seam itself and makes it look more like two boards glued together versus one large board. Just so you understand what I mean here, these two boards don't have that chamfer on the joint so when you press them together, the seam basically disappears and it looks like it's one large board. Whereas when you have that chamfer, you can see the seam and tell that it's two boards glued together. It's really just an aesthetic thing and I, I like the way it looks. So we're ready to glue these up and use my patented glue spreader. I 
and then use a bunch of clamps. You also want to make sure that you clean up any glue squeeze out in the little chamfer valley that we created. While that glue up dries, I'm starting on the breadboard ends using the same six quarter red oak. I'm ripping them down to two and three quarter width and then cutting them to the same 15 inch length that will be the width of the bench top. Now I'm going to be attaching these with some dowels. So you'll see me making a bunch of marks here just for reference on where to drill my dowel holes. I'm doing my best to mark exact center on both the breadboard end and the bench top itself so that my dowel holes will line up correctly. It's important to mark your holes with an awl or a punch like this so that your drill bit doesn't try and wander when you actually go to drill your holes. Now the holes on the ends of the breadboards will actually be a little bit wider to allow for wood movement in the bench top. So on these ones I'm drilling two holes and then I'm coming back with a chisel to clean it up. Essentially, I want the dowel to be able to slide side to side, but not up and down. This will let the bench top expand and contract as humidity changes. Now on the bench top itself, I'm not making those slots. I don't want these dowels to shift at all on this side of the glue up. I'm also adding that small chamfer to this seam as well. On this side of the glue up, I'm gluing all four dowels into place. Now on the breadboard side, I'm only putting glue in the middle of the board, as well as the two middle dowel holes. The outside dowels, as mentioned before, I want to be able to move and the glue would stop that from happening. After it's all glued up, we move on to every woodworker's favorite thing, which is sanding. Just kidding. I hate it. But it's got to be done. So we go through the grits. I start at 80 and then work my way up to 120. And I do this for the base and the bench top. I also use some 120 grit sandpaper to smooth over the sharp edges of the bench because nobody likes sharp edges poking your legs while you're sitting on a bench, unless you're some sort of masochist or something. After all the sanding is done, we're ready for some finish. Now I'm using Minwax oil-based stain here. This color is Provincial. And it's super easy to apply. You just use a foam brush to apply the stain to the whole piece. Once you've applied the stain, you let it soak for a few minutes and then you come back with a clean cloth and wipe away any excess. You just wanna make sure that when you wipe you wipe with the direction of the wood grain and not across it. Otherwise you'll end up with some splotchy, weird looking stain. And I applied this same stain to the base as well.
After the stain was good and dry, I went ahead and applied two coats of this spray-on satin polyurethane to both the base and the bench top. Now to attach the top to the base, I just used some aluminum L brackets that are pretty loose fitting and flexible enough that they should still allow for the wood movement of the bench top. After that, it's all done. As always, if you enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching.